see that jiggle right there? You know that thing is that. Yeah, it's just falling apart. I ain't even got to pull it. This is a 14 and a half pound brisket. Before you do anything, I'll trim it up. You need a strategic spark. It'll take a while for me to do it. I ain't no pro in trimming. If you're a pro, it'll probably take you about five, ten minutes. So, flip it over. You don't really got to trim the bottom too much. What you want to do, or what you could do, is just take off that little extra layer of a uh, little silver skin. sections, the flat and the point. The point is the more tender. Let's flip this over. Now this little extra piece of meat, we don't take that off. We want more of a, let's say, aerodynamic. You feel me? So it's, because this thing will do nothing but cook quick. And it's going to burn. What I'm doing is this part stem so that it'll cook faster than the rest of the brisket and it'll crisp up. Trim it off. That's pretty thick right there. This brisket had so much fat on it when I got it. Otherwise, I would have chose a different one. So you don't want to go too deep. But as you can see, I don't know if y'all can see that, but I'm starting to get into the meat right there. So, it's my fault. Going too deep too soon. Put your hand up under it so you get a better leverage. The sharper the knife, the easier it is for you to cut it. Trimmed. It's pretty decent. You ain't got to cut off. Don't do too much cutting. If you 
cut too deep into the meat, don't even worry about it. Especially the points. The points, you can trim off as much as you want. You leave a lot of fat on the, the flat side because it ain't really no fat on that side, so it ain't it won't be as juicy as the point. But you make it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, it got a little bit too happy with it, too aggressive, but it's all right. It ain't gonna affect the flavor. So it's looking pretty good, actually. I'm actually pretty satisfied with this. It ain't too much fat on this side. Cause even me just cutting it a little bit, I hit the meat, so I know. I don't really need to trim them more, but uh, just kidding. Break that down. Like I said, I ain't no pro, so. Just gonna go with this. And I can already tell when it starts cooking, all that juice just gonna start flow right off of it. No problem. Might have a problem right here. You don't really want no puddle settling on your meat. And it'll tend to cook slower. Not not too much of a difference. But what happen is you will get a different color in that one little spot versus everywhere else because the that that puddle of juice is preventing the smoke from hitting that part of the meat so what i'm trying to do right now is just create a pathway so if anything does puddle up right here it can just slide on through right there I can do it's a big piece of fat right there. Like I said, I'm gonna leave it alone. I don't want to dig too much into it. And the, what that is, this piece of fat, it go all the way through the meat because that fat is separating the two different sides of the meat, the flat and the point. This little fat right here is it's so thin, I ain't worried about it. I could just take off. It's a little silver skin, but I ain't really worrying about it too much. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that. I ain't really tripping on it.
probably put this on the grill between 12 a.m. and 2 a.m. Normally I could cook these within about five, six hours, but I want to try to slow it down and, you know, cook it a little slow. But even if you cook it hotter fast, you still get, you can still get the same result as you cooking it, you know, low and slow. I always cook them hot and fast, but I want to try to do at least an eight hour. I'm shooting for 12, but we'll see. We'll see. The time really don't matter as long as the meat is ready. Always checking meat. Even though I want to go for about 10 to 12 hours. If it's done in six to eight, then it's done. now is I'm going to salt the meat. What I'm to do now is called a dry brine. You know, just to, it's a big piece of meat. So, you want to try to get some flavor into it. You want to try to get some flavor into it as soon as you can, or as much flavor as you can into it. Because if we just season it and throw it on the grill, that's that, that, that season won't like soak into the meat. So, for that, we just do a dry brine. Just salt it. Now we ain't gonna use a whole lot of salt, just just enough, just enough to get over the top of it. Even though it's a big piece of meat, it can take a lot of salt, but I ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna salt it too much. Just a little bit on over the top, right at the bottom. Flip it over, same thing. Now, salt won't absorb as much into the fat, but it'll still flavor it. So, and we're going to let that sit in the fridge until about 12 o'clock, which is about six hours from now. Sorry, seven. Let's take it out. Then throw the rub on it, set my grill up, throw it on the grill. So, set up the grill, snake method. But today, I'm using hickory. Meat season now. Throwing on. Aiden, see what you season it with. That's fine. That's all later. <laughs> you want the point side closer to the fire. Since that's the thickest part of the meat, that's going to take the longest to cook. So. Close it down, probably come check on it in about two hours. What I did yesterday was bought me a thermostat. It's at 300 now, I closed the vent down a little bit. I want to try to go to like 275, 250. That's where we at right now. This is about three hours. I'm gonna turn it so I get this point closer to the fire side. In about two hours. 
them five hours right now. That's what I got. See what I meant by you get them puddles so it won't set. See how it look different? But if you get them puddles, then it won't look. We just get something to prop up, prop up, prop up the meat. So now it's just gonna run all out. See what temperature we have. You know how it goes. Just put in the thickest part of the meat. It's still hard too, so we know we got a little while longer to go. It's about at 168, and it's still tough, so you know they ain't nowhere near ready. It is hard. Normally I'll wrap it at this point just so it could speed up the cook, but I'm gonna leave it like this. Alright, so it's been about six hours now. Let's see what we got. Uh, no. It's a little more tender now. But we still don't get. 165. It's actually into the stall right now. It's a little more tender, but yeah, it's still got a ways to go. So, what I didn't want to do was wrap it, but I'm gonna end up, I'm gonna wrap it because the wife side should be done soon. Even, even though I said I wouldn't. Ended up wrapping it anyway. I just normally I have the long piece for you, but since I don't got that, I'm just overlapping it. So, just wrap it on up. Simple. Try to get it as tight as you can. Just gonna roll it on up. Back on the grill the same way. Fat side up. I'm gonna let it go for about an hour. Check it again. So what I did, since it was cooking a little slower than I wanted, I put all the coals on one side. So just to get more heat. Let's check it. Oh, it's, it's, oh yeah. I think it's about done. It's, it's tender right now. This is at the nine hour mark. The flat still is not as tender as I want, it, but I think it's all right. So I'm gonna take it off and I'm gonna put it in the grill. So right now, I just took it off the grill. I'm gonna let it rest for about 30 minutes. Normally, you, you want to wrap it in some towels, paper towel, put it in the cooler. But you want to keep it wrapped because if you unwrap it, then all the juice is just going to flow out. So I'm going to wrap, keep it wrapped. So whatever juice that flows out, the meat will suck it back in. So I'm going to let this rest for about 30 minutes, like I say. So you're going to unwrap this. Now I can't hang up. It's been resting for about just about an hour. Unwrap this. Goodness, oh man, see this the color that you want right here. This is exactly what you want. We know what happened before, like it was a puddle right here, but that's all right. It ain't gonna affect the flavor. Let me just take this for oh, man, this is falling apart. Take this foil up out of here. It's still hot. Even though I've been resting for an hour. Still hot. Take this forward up out here. Yeah. You see that jiggle right there? You know that thing is primed and ready to go. That jiggle, 
Look at, look, look at that thing. Look at that thing. Look at it go. Goodness gracious. Okay, so the, the grain of the meat runs this way. So I'm going to cut. Well, as, as a matter of fact, I'm going to cut it in the middle first. Separate the point from the flat. So what I'm going to do right now, look at that there. I ain't going to squeeze it. Cause, see? See that smoke ring right there? That's what you want. I'm going to point that down right there. And we want to cooperate. So now what I'm going to do, since the grain runs this way, let's cut. Let's move that on out the way. As a matter of fact, let me turn it this way. So I can cut it for y'all. I'm going to cut it thin, especially the flat. Let's do a bend test. The way you know you got a good brisket, let's do a bend test. Oh, it's hot. Goodness gracious. And then bend. Yeah. Bend. All right, so I'm trying to handle it. So I bend, fold over, halfway. It ain't hot. And that's the that's the flat right there. And you, another way you can tell if it's cooked right, you don't gotta put it too much. Just tug it a little bit, and it break apart. See, just like that. Yeah, yeah, that's good brisket right there. Taste, taste it. Taste it. Oh, that's all right. Mm -hmm. Boys, where we going? The real flavor is in that point. The flat is good, but that point, oh man, that's gonna take you to another level right now. Okay, baby, give me a minute. It's hot. Okay. Right. So, you see how we cut the. The flat one way, we cut the flat this way. But since it's two different cuts of meat, we're gonna have to turn it, turn the, turn the point the opposite direction. And we're gonna cut it like this. Now, what you can do, if you want some burn ends, you cut some thick cubes by one by one, and you throw them back on the grill for about another 30 minutes to an hour. But we, we ain't doing that. So now. Still too cooked. It's, it's my, it should, it should be some left over, I'm sure. No. Look, look at that point. Oh my gosh. Dang, <laughs> goodness gracious. It's hot. 
Okay. Do the bend test on the point. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it's just falling apart. I ain't even got to pull it. Yeah. Mommy. That's exactly what you want right there. Mommy. This cook for nine hours and then rest it for an hour. Mommy. So that's what we got. That's the end product. Mommy. Oh, that was a good, um...